Welcome back, everyone, to the VBC Bible Institute and podcast. This is lesson number three in our course on Psalm 119. Now, I truly hope everyone has been enjoying the course so far. I hope you're benefiting greatly from it. I hope this has been helpful to your spiritual life, and I hope that you're growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I truly hope that is occurring. But I have to take just a few seconds to remind everyone of a very important principle. You're going to get out of this course what you put into it. You have to put forth some effort to really gain as much out of this course as you can get. Now, you can just be a passive listener, and that's perfectly okay. If you're a passive listener, you're not really doing the work, you're not doing the assignments, you're not doing the reading, you're just listening. That's perfectly fine. We are grateful that you are listening. Welcome. Thank you. If you know others may, who may benefit from just listening, please share this with others everyone you know and say, hey, listen to this, you know, Bible Institute podcast thing. Uh, don't really know exactly what it is. It's this weird hybrid thing, but but I think you will benefit from it. Please share it. We will we'll be grateful for that. However, there are some of you who are actively participating, and I think those who are actively participating will get more out of the course. I really believe you will. And so I challenge even the passive listeners to, even if you don't email me and don't sign up, you know, to be a, you know, an, you know, an active participant in the course, even if you just do the assignments on your own, you will benefit greatly from it. All right. So, so just keep that in mind. I want you to get as much out of this course as possible. Remember, I'm not getting anything from this, right? I'm not charging you any money. I'm not getting anything from this. So I'm I am producing this for your benefit. And so I have to challenge you, put forth a little effort. You'll get more out of it. And I think you will see that as we move forward to whatever courses we have planned in the future. All right, Psalm 119, Psalm 119. That's our focus here, Psalm 119. Now, you've, had been, you've been given a number of assignments. There was a quiz for you to do. You have a reading assignment. The book, an exposition of Psalm 119 by, say, what's the name? Thomas Manton, I believe. Thomas Manton, the Puritan pastor. You're supposed to be reading that book. You're supposed to have a notebook and you're writing down your observations from whatever Thomas Manton says about Psalm 119. From Psalm 119 itself, you're writing down observations, you're writing down challenges, you're writing down questions, you're reading and you're writing. Now, why do I want you to read and to write? Very important. If you read and if you write, you typically will retain far more than if you simply just read. If you just pick up the book by Thomas Manton, an exposition of Psalm 119, and just read it, that's good. But if you read it and are writing down observations and thinking about it and meditating on it, you will retain much more. And I really want you to benefit greatly from reading that book. Now, if you, again, need a copy of that book and you don't want to purchase it, email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com, and I'll be more than happy to send you a link to a PDF file, perfectly free, perfectly legal, please use it, all right? So be working on that. There's some other assignments that you need to work on dealing with Psalm 19, but we're not going to review all of that. There was a quiz. We're not going to review all of that. What we're going to do is jump in and try to finish up what we've been working on, I think, in the last, maybe the last two lessons or at least the last lesson. And that's it. And Psalm 119, we'll we'll just jump right back in. And if you need to go back, you can listen. Now, it's just a reminder. Some of you will hear the VBC Bible Institute podcast on podcast platforms all over the place. I would challenge you. I would challenge you. Please go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and do a search for the Spreaker app. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Spreaker app in your in your app store, it should say something like uh, Spreaker Podcast Radio. Download that app. Do a search for VBC. That stands for Victory Baptist Church. You will find a page that says Vic, uh, VBC by Victory Baptist Church. Literally tap on the words that say Victory Baptist Church. That will open a page that has all of our shows. 
all of our podcasts. Go to each one, tap the little star to make us to, to make us a favorite. Make sure on the on the first page you see about Victory Baptist Church, the big yellow button that says follow, tap that, and then you'll get notifications. And here's the reason why. If you're listening to a podcast somewhere or to a podcast platform, one, you're not going to get notified when we're live on the air. Uh, number two, you may not be getting all the content from all the different shows. So go to each show um, on the Spreaker app. I know you may be using other apps, but I think you'll find that uh, that will be beneficial and you can keep up with everything. Okay, I'm sorry to waste your time with that. Some of you already know that, but we have new listeners all the time, so I have to kind of inform them of what's going on. All right, got that? All right, here we go. Psalm 119. Let's get right back into it. All right. We are working that, this is kind of the, the premise that we're working on. In Psalm 119, and between verse 1 and verse 24 of Psalm 119, there are basically eight words used to describe the scriptures, or eight words that we could say are, are used to, to kind of give a title for the scriptures. And now you were supposed to find all eight of them, and I was just going to leave it there and move on in our study of Psalm 119, but I have decided to give you each word, give you all the scriptures in Psalm 119 where that word and that title is used. And then you were supposed to go through each one of those verses and write down what you learn. Let me, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If, if you don't remember, right? Psalm 119, there are eight basic words used to describe the scriptures. If you look at Psalm 119, verse one, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The term law is used here to describe the scriptures, a title for the scriptures we could say. Now that word law comes from the Hebrew word Torah. Sometimes we'll say Torah. Um, It's used, we think, around 25 times. There's some disagreement there, but around 25 times. Uh, The Hebrew word is Torah, if I didn't say that. Um, Its definition means law, direction, instruction, and it can be used of a single command or of a whole body of law. Now, I have all the scriptures in which, uh, are all the scriptures, all the verses within Psalm 119 that uses the term Torah law. And you were, and I gave you all of them. Psalm 119 verse 1, Psalm 119 verse 18, Psalm 119 verse 29, verse 34, verse 44, verse 51, 53, 55, 61, 70, etc., 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 etc. You are supposed to go to each one and write down what you learn in regards to the law related to this. Let me give you an example. Psalm 119, go to verse 18. Psalm 119 verse 18. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. What would I write down? I would write Psalm 119, verse 18. And what do I learn? That there are wonderful things in God's law. Wonderful things in God's law. But I pray that God would open my eyes to see them. Why would I do that? Because probably my flesh won't always see wonderful things in law. Law is about you can't do this and you can't do that. And we have a tendency to see that as a negative thing. But, the, but Psalm 119 is telling me that there are wonderful things in the law. That would be a thing I would write down. And you're supposed to do that for each one. All right. So let's go through these again. All right. So the first word is law, Torah. The second word all right, that is used, or the, uh, the second word is used, is the word word, okay, word. And let me give you an example. Look at Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. So the second title for the scriptures is word. It is the word. Now, the Hebrew term here is divar. It's used, we think, around 24 times. Um, it's when the definition for the, the, the word word here, the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew for the Hebrew divar means speech, word, speaking, spoken word, God's revealed word to us. If we want to hear the words of God, if we want the words of God, we go to the scriptures. 
The scriptures are the speech of God, the inspired word of God. God's words are there. We don't get some special word, some secret word. No, we open up the scriptures and there we get the speech of God. Um, it's, uh, and, and some of the places that it's used, Psalm 119, verse 9, verse 16, verse 17, I could go through all of the, again, again, I'm not going to list them. But again, just to remind you of your assignment, Psalm 119, verse 9. Um, yeah, Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. What would I write down? How do I cleanse my way? By taking heed to God's word. And then I would go to the next reference, go to the next reference, write down what I learned. You were supposed to be working on that. That is your assignment. Now, the reason, the reason I'm doing that is it's getting you into the text. It's getting you into the text. I could sit here and give you outlines. I could sit here and give you all kinds of points, and we will be working on that. But the goal of a Bible Institute is to get you into the actual Bible. And this is to work on your observational skills. Right? Observational skills are key to any Bible education. You've got to learn how to observe what is in the text. All right, so there. The first one is law. That's the first term used, uh, given, or first, I guess, title given of the scriptures. Law, the Hebrew is Torah. Again, used around 25 times. I'm not going to review all of that. Second is the word word, divar. It means speech, word, speaking, and I've given you the scriptures in the last one. The third one is judgments. Judgments. And the Hebrew word is mishpat. Judgments. Uh, judgments, uh, the definition here, judgment, justice, ordinance. Um, it's used around 23 times. Uh, the, word, the word judges our words, our works, and our thoughts. It shows the rule by which they should be uh, regulated. It causes us to discern what is right and what's wrong. The Bible is the judgment of God. It gives judgment to our words, our thoughts, and our actions, and our works. It judges. We don't judge. It is God's word that judges. Very important. It does the judging. It does the discerning. It does showing what is right and what is wrong. Okay? Um, I gave you all the scriptures where it is used, but again, just for practice sake, for example sake. Psalm 119, verse 7. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. What, 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 what would I write down? I should praise God with the uprightness of heart when I have learned righteous judgments. The learning of God's righteous judgments should lead me to praise God. Him. Now, we don't often connect learning righteous judgment should lead me to praise God, but that is one of the observations we see right there. All right. So let's go through those again. I know I'm doing a lot of review, but I really want to drive this home. It will probably bother some people that I'm doing this much review, but that's okay. We have law, Torah, word, divar, judgments, um, the Hebrew mishpat, and now we move to number four, testimonies. Testimonies. Now, the uh, Hebrew word used for testimonies is adah. We find it in Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 2. Psalm 119, verse 2, we read, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Blessed are, uh, blessed are they that keep his his testimonies. So the fourth term, fourth title given um, of the scriptures in Psalm 119 is the term testimonies. Again, it's the Hebrew word adah. It's used around 23 times. Um, the definition here for adah is testimony, witness, always, uh, it's always plural. That's interesting. It's always plural and always of laws as divine testimonies. It's interesting, it's always plural. Um, at least that's according to one um, Hebrew source. Always plural, 
and always of laws as divine testimonies. So it speaks of, of the law, or it speaks of divine testimonies, or as laws plural. It's the testimonies, in fact, let me give me, give me an example here. I'm going to look up a note. Um, it's, it's okay. It's interesting. The word is related to the word for witness. That's interesting. To obey his testimonies signifies loyalty to the terms of the covenant made between the Lord and Israel is how it was often used. So it's a witness. I think that's interesting. It's a testimony. Uh, we, we sometimes speak of when we witness, one of, the way, uh, one of the effective ways to give our witness is to give our testimony. Sometimes you'll hear that said. Well, God's word is the testimony of God. It's a testimony of his law. It's his witness of his law, of his way, of his standard. I think that's a, a right way. It's a testimony. Let's look at some, um, well, I'll give you all the places that this is used. Uh, testimonies, again, the Hebrew word is adah. 23 times means testimony, witness. It's always plural, and it's, it seems to always speak of laws and divine testimonies. Here are some of the places it is used. Psalm 119, verse 2. Psalm 119, verse 22. Psalm 119, verse 24. Psalm 119, verse 46. Psalm 119, verse 59. Psalm 119, verse 79. Psalm 119, verse 95. Psalm 119, verse 119. Psalm 119, verse 125. Psalm 119, verse 138. Psalm 119, verse 146. Psalm 119, verse 152. Psalm 119, verse 167. And Psalm 119, verse 168. I'll give those to you one more, one more time. The word is testimonies. This is another title given to the scriptures in Psalm 119. It comes from the Hebrew word adah. All right? It means testimony or witness. It seems to be always plural. It seems to uh, reveal or speak of God's laws and divine testimonies. It's a, it's a testimony. It's God's testimony. It's a witness of his holiness, of his standard, of his right and his wrong. It's used in Psalm 119 in the following verses. I'm not going to say Psalm 119 after all of these, but just to know it's Psalm 119. That's obviously the course. Psalm 119, verse 2, and now I'll just read the verses, or, or just give you the verses. Psalm 119, verse 2, uh, verse, uh, verse 2, verse 22, verse 24, verse 46, verse 59, verse 79, verse 95, verse 119, verse 125, Verse 138, verse 146, verse 152, verse 167, and verse 168. I'll read it again. Verse 2, verse 22, verse 24, verse 46, verse 59, verse 79, verse 95, verse 119, verse 125, verse 138, verse 146, verse 152, verse 167, and verse 168. Now, I know you're saying, why are you reading all these verses to me? Or why are you just giving me all these verses? I'm giving you these verses so that you have the references. I'm saving you the effort. I'm saving you the time from looking all of these up. But what I want you to do is read them and then write down, what do you learn about the testimonies um, in regards to all these scriptures? Let's do a little practice here, a little work on this, all right? Psalm 119, verse 2, blessed are they that keep his testimonies. There is blessing for those who keep the testimonies of God. Let's look at another one. Um, verse 22. Verse 22. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. All right. We don't learn a lot there, but we are seeing that because the psalmist has kept the testimonies, he's asking God to remove reproach and contempt. Doesn't always work that way, but okay. Verse 24, thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. The testimonies of God should be your delight and they should serve as your counselors. 
And again, note the, plur- the plurality, how it's choosing. God's testimonies, they should be your delight. They should be your counselors. Because the testimonies, is, there's more than just one because it's, it's all, everything God says in his word, in a sense, serves as that. All right, we could go through more. You get the idea. You're supposed to look those up. Let's move to the fifth one. All right, the fifth one is found in Psalm 119, verse six. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. The next term used to describe the scriptures, the next title given for the scriptures is commandments. Commandments. The Hebrew word is mitzvah. Mitzvah. All right. Uh, It's used, I think I have 22 times. Now, again, I'm questioning some of these. I've got, I looked up different sources of how many. I didn't necessarily go through each one and count. And the reason I didn't is I want you to do that so that you can write down the exact number for yourself, giving you another thing to work on. All right. But mitzvah, commandments, it means commandment. Well, that's, that's deep. Um, It emphasizes, it seems to emphasize the authority of what is said. It seems to be emphasizing these are the commandments of God and they have authority. You don't have the authority. The commandments have the authority. All right. Now, where is this? Where, where, where do we find this term used in Psalm 119? Where here are the scriptures it is used. Okay. Psalm 119 verse 6. Psalm 119, verse 10. Psalm 119, verse 19. Psalm 119, verse 21. Psalm 119, verse 32. Psalm 119, verse 35. Psalm 119, verse 47. Psalm 119, verse 48. Psalm 119, verse 60. Psalm 119, verse 66. Psalm 119, verse 73. Psalm 119, verse 86. Psalm 119, verse 96. Psalm 119, verse 98. Psalm 119, verse 115. Psalm 119, verse 127. Psalm 119, verse 131. Psalm 119, verse 143. Psalm 119, verse 151. Psalm 119, verse 166, Psalm 119, verse 172, and Psalm 119, verse 176. I know giving you these lists are tedious, but I I, I mean, this is a part of getting an education, all right? You've got to do some of this work. And and again, I'm saving you uh, from looking all of these up. Let me give those to you again. The word is commandments. It comes from the Hebrew word mitzvah means commandments. It emphasizes the authority of what is said. And here is where it is found in Psalm 119. 119 verse 6, verse 10, verse 19, verse 21, verse 32, verse 35, verse 47, verse 48, verse 60, verse 66, verse 73, verse 86, verse 96, verse 98, Verse 115, verse 127, verse 131, verse 143, verse 151, verse 166, verse 172, and verse 176. All right, we can look up a couple of these just to show you how this works. Uh, Psalm 119, um, verse, uh, Psalm 119, verse 6, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. When I have respect unto God's commandments, I will not be ashamed. That's an observation, something you can write down that that you learn in regards to this. Go to verse 10. Psalm 119, verse 10. Psalm 119, verse 10. We read, With my whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander from thy commandments. This is a prayer. Lord, don't let me wander from your commandments. I may know them. I may memorize them. I may learn about them. I may know how to interpret them. I may know how to apply them. I may know how to give them to everyone else. Let me not wander from them. Let that be a prayer that you pray, especially as you gain a Bible education. You can learn all the biblical truths in the world, 
pray that you will not wander from those truths. Knowing the truth is far different than not wandering away from the truth. Right? So very important practical lesson right there. All right, let's go to number six. We're going to finish this one way or the other. All right? Number six. You'll see it in Psalm 119, verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. The next word used to describe the scriptures or a title for the scriptures given in Psalm 119. And again, we're finding all of these in verses 1 to 24. That's where they're first mentioned. And then, of course, they're repeated throughout the psalm. But the, the word is statutes. It's, it's, it's pronounced hulk, hulk. It's kind of like a guttural sound in Hebrew. Um, I've seen it written out like transliter, transliteration a, di- a lot of different ways. C-H-A-Q. Uh, K H or K H O K E, I guess. Hulk, Hulk, I got, but Hulk, I think is the way you say it. My, my Hebrew is not perfect, but you're getting the basic idea. Um, it means statutes, that's deep, ordinance, something prescribed. So the statutes are something that God prescribes. Now, again, a lot of these terms have, have, um, they're similar, or they, you may feel like they're saying kind of the same thing, but it is interesting that Psalm 119, written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that God, that God leads the writer of Psalm 119 to use different terms, but all of these terms are terms used for basically as a title for the scriptures. I think they're showing you a little bit of the, of the character of the scriptures, of its attributes, a little bit of... Uh, kind of the diff- different ways in which it, it's used, it's different emphasis. It's trying to give you that the scriptures, again, it is through the scriptures that the man of God is thoroughly furnished unto every good work. We are made perfect, complete. The scriptures are what completes us. It's what we have because the scriptures are complete in and of themselves. And because they have all of these different little shades of meaning, giving you how they are used and their character. So I think that I think it's interesting that it uses these different terms. All right, but statutes, hulk, statue, ordinance, something prescribed. It's used, we think, twenty-one times. Again, I'm, I'm putting a question mark after each one of those because I want you to count as you work through this. But here are the scriptures where we find it: Psalm one nineteen, verse five; Psalm Psalm one nineteen, verse eight; Psalm one nineteen, verse twelve. Psalm 119, verse 23. Psalm 119, verse 26. Psalm 119, verse 33. Psalm 119, verse 48. Psalm 119, verse 54. Psalm 119, verse 64. Psalm 119, verse 68. Psalm 119, verse 71. Psalm 119, verse 80. Psalm 119, verse 83. Psalm 119, verse 112. Psalm 119, verse 117. Psalm 119, verse 118. Psalm 119, verse 124. Psalm 119, verse 135. Psalm 119, verse 145. Psalm 119, verse 155. And Psalm 119, verse 171. All right. I'm going to give you uh, this list one more time. I'm not going to say Psalm 119 before each one. I'll do it for the first. The word statutes, Hebrew word hok, statue, ordinance, something prescribed, used 21 times. First use is Psalm 119, verse 5. Then Psalm 119, verse 5, verse 8, verse 12, verse 23, verse 26, verse 33, verse 48, verse 54, verse 64, verse 68. Verse 71, verse 80, verse 83, verse 112, verse 117, verse 118, verse 124, verse 135, 145, 155, and 171. Now, let's again, let's look up some of these just to show you what you're supposed to be doing. All right, you're supposed to go through each one of those verses. You're supposed to be looking them up and then writing down what you observe and what you learn in regards to how this term is used. What do we learn about statutes? 
Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. There's a prayer there that he wants his ways directed to keep God's statutes, to keep those things which God prescribes. Let's look at another way that it is used. Let's go to um, verse 8. Psalm 119, verse 8. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Right? Verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Right? Now, some of, the, some of these are very simple observations. There's not a lot to write down. I would challenge you as you are looking up all these verses and writing down your observations, if you see a pattern or a theme emerge, let's say there's a certain theme that emerges for the use of statutes. Maybe there's a, there's a theme that emerges for the, uh, the, ter- you know, the, ter- the word testimonies, uh, for commandments, uh, or for the term word. If there's, a, if there's a kind of a theme that shows up, then, then note that theme. You know, why is it? is it? Is it because something, that term is giving an emphasis? Then, then definitely write that down. All right? So far, so good. All right, now we go to number seven. We only got two left. The eighth one is the one that'll get a little confusing. The seventh one is, I don't know how to pronounce the Hebrew word, but that's Okay. <laughs> All right, number seven is found in Psalm 119, verse four. Psalm 119, verse four. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. The next term is precepts. Precepts. Write that down. Now, the Hebrew word is pikudem, okay? Uh, pick you deem, uh, you deem, maybe that's the way, yeah, I think that's the way you should say it. Pick you deem. Pick you deem is probably the way to say it. Now, I'm not completely pronouncing it correctly, but pick you deem is the Hebrew word. It's not so much that you need to know the Hebrew term, uh, and you can look it up in, in Blue Letter Bible app or any other app. Pick you deem. Um, it's used around 21 times. Um, this is a word known from the sphere of an officer or overseer. Um, and and a man who is resp- uh, and 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 who is responsible to look closely into a situation and take action, it points to the practical instructions of the Lord as one who cares about details. So, according to one source, this word comes from the sphere of an officer of an overseer, a man who who is responsible to look closely into a situation, and take action. So the precepts of God are instructions showing that God cares about the details. He cares about the details. All right, that's, that's an in- interesting emphasis. I don't know if that emphasis is shown and how it's used throughout Psalm 119. That will be for you to figure out. But where is it, where is it used? Again, the word is precepts. The Hebrew word is pic- picudim. 21 times, it's a word drawn from the sphere of an officer, an overseer, a man who is responsible to look closely into a situation and take action. It points to to the particular instructions of the Lord as one who cares about details. It is used in Psalm 119, verse 4. Psalm 119, verse 15. Psalm 119, verse 27. Psalm 119, verse 40. Psalm 119, verse 45. Psalm 119, verse 56. Psalm 119, verse 63. Psalm 119, verse 69. Psalm 119, verse 78. Psalm 119, verse 87. Psalm 119, verse 93. Psalm 119, verse 94. Psalm 119, verse 100. Psalm 119, verse 104. And I have to look here because I cannot read my writing. Psalm 119. Yes, it's also used in verse 110. Yes, Psalm 119, verse 110 uh, reads, The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. That's interesting. God's precepts can, uh, they, they may have laid a trap, 
They laid a snare, but he did not err from the precepts. The precepts are the details that may help us avoid a snare. That's that kind of an interesting concept there. All right, let me go back through these again. Sorry, I had to, to go look that one up because um, I looked at my notes and I'm like, I can't read this. All right, here we go. Psalm 119, verse 4. Psalm 119, verse 15. Psalm 119, verse 27. Psalm 119, verse 40. Psalm 119, verse 45. Psalm 119, verse 56. Psalm 119, verse 63. Psalm 119, verse 69. Psalm 119, verse 78. Psalm 119, verse 87. Psalm 119, verse 93. Psalm 119, verse 93. Psalm 119, verse 94. Psalm 119, verse 100. Psalm 119, verse 104. Psalm 119, verse 110. Psalm 119, verse 128. 134, 141, 159, 168, and 173. Again, it is used in Psalm 119 in the following verses. Verse 4, verse 15, verse 27, verse 40. Verse 45, verse 56, verse 63, verse 69, verse 78, verse 87, verse 93, verse 94, verse 100, verse 104, verse 110, verse 128, verse 134, verse 141, verse 159, verse 168, and verse 173. Those are all the places where the term precepts is used. Again, the Hebrew word is pikudim, right? Used around 21 times. All right, got that? Again, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This is tedious work, but it's important. It's important. And maybe I should have just left it for everyone else to look up, but I wanted to do this to try to just get people, trying to do some of the work to get people involved in the learning process. All right, so there's only one to go and then we are done with this. All right. Now, if you remember, the second term that we saw, the first one was law and the second one was the term word. Word was used as a title for the scriptures. It's from the Hebrew word divar. Well, number eight is the word word again. Now, why are we using it again? Well, because it seems in Psalm 119, we have the term translated into our English Bibles as word, but they come from two different Hebrew terms. All right, so I found this somewhat interesting um, the, the eighth one comes from the Hebrew word emra, emra, all right? It means utterance and speech. It's used in Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Word, if you go back to the previous use of the term word, It's not used. Uh, it's a different Hebrew word. It shows up first in Psalm 119, verse 9. Um, Where, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And verse 9, it is divar. In verse 11, thy word, have I, uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word word in verse 11, um, let me get to the page, is imra. Two different Hebrew terms. So, do we have word written down twice? Some list, that this is important because you, you'll find these eight terms in study Bibles, commentaries all over the place. Not everyone agrees. In fact, I believe, let me go to my notes here. I believe I have a list here. Yes, um, here's from a commentary. Note the eight basic titles of the Bible in the first nine verses of the psalm. Law of the Lord, testimony, ways, precepts, statutes, commandments, judgments, and word. Now, they only have the word word used once, and they replace the other use of the word word with ways. However, there's two different Hebrew terms used for word. So others will say, no, 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 no. We need to just have word listed twice. 
Now, I want to bring this to your attention because, again, this is about observation. If you leave, now this is very important. All right, now, now we're going to get to some really practical stuff, and I'm going to I'm going to pound the pulpit here. All right, I'm going to pound the pulpit. As a Bible student, do not leave the work of observation up to other people. Many Christians do not do the work of observation; they rely on the observation of others. Others observe, hey, there's eight basic terms used for the scriptures here in Psalm 119, and it's used right there in the first part of Psalm 119. Awesome observation. Great. They give you a list. You say, great. You walk away with that list thinking that that's the case. You have to observe it for yourself. And close observation would make you go, wait a minute. That's the word word is used there. And the word word is used here. But that's a different Hebrew word than the one used for that use of the word word. So we've got the word in English, but it comes from two different Hebrew words. Why is that? How should we approach that? Well, we should at least observe it. Sometimes an observation will be of great significance when it comes to interpretation and understanding. Sometimes it will not, but you don't know until you at least consider the observation. The only way you're going to detect that observation, the only way, is by spending some time in the text and looking things up. All right? So that's why we've gone through this work. So let's go to number eight. Turn my notes here. So we have the word word. Used this, this is the second time it's used in our list of eight. It's the English word word, but it comes from the Hebrew word emra. Remember, the other use of the word word in Psalm 119 comes from the Hebrew word divar. Now, this word means utterance, speech, word. Okay, very similar, very similar. It's used 19 times, and here's the way it is used, or these are the places it is used. Psalm 119, verse 11, verse 38. Verse 41, verse 50, verse 58, verse 67, verse 76, verse 82, verse 103, verse 116, verse 123, verse 133, verse 140, 148, 154, 158, 162, 170, and 172. It is used in verse 11, verse 38, verse 41, verse 50, verse 58, verse 67, verse 76, verse 82, verse 103, verse 116, verse 123, verse 133, verse 140, 148, 154, 158, 162, 170, and 172. If you compare it, to the other use of the word word, you'll notice it's different verses. It's not the same verses because it's different Hebrew words that, we, that the translators just translated both of them as word. Now, I'm not saying that that's a mistake. I'm not saying it's a mistake. I'm saying uh, that there is a different Hebrew term, so we're going to write them down that way. Those are the eight basic terms used to describe the scriptures are titles given to the scriptures and Psalm 119. You will find all of them used the first time between verse 1 and verse 24, and then they're used over and over and over again throughout the rest of the Psalms, or rest of Psalm 119, and I think you'll find them in a number of other places in, in the book of Psalms and the Bible itself. So there you have it. Now you've got work to do. You've got to look up all those verses and you've got to write down, you've got to write down an observation for each one. What did you, do you notice a pattern? Do you, what do you observe? The, the effort you put into your observation is a skill that will come into play later. All right, now let me go back to some notes. What do we want to do next? Well, the next part is just going, I'm not going to make you do it. I'm not going to make you do it. We will just start teaching on it 
in the next lesson, but I wanted to get through this today. All right, so let's make a couple of uh, thoughts here, a couple of thoughts here to really drive this home. First, I, on one hand, I'm a, a, I want to apologize because I know this is very tedious and maybe not quite the way I want it to go, but... At all, I mean, I've sat in Bible, uh, I've sat in seminary classrooms, uh, Bible college classrooms, Bible institute classrooms. I've sat in all kinds of college classrooms. And um, I've sat under some very boring lectures where the, the professor doesn't seem to be that excited about what they are teaching. So I, so I, on one hand, I'm not doing anything drastically different than what, that's been done in Bible colleges and universities all around uh, the world, okay? You, sometimes you have to do this tedious information, and sometimes this is where the student starts tuning out. But I, I want you to realize I'm doing something valuable. I'm giving you scriptures to look up. I'm getting you into the text. And sometimes lectures have to be done this way. So even though I want to apologize, I can't. However, I do, do, I do want to do my best to make the lectures not like monotone, boring, look up the following verses, verse 1, verse 2. You know, I, I, I do want to, to not always do that. But there will be times that we have to get into the very tedious academic work if we're really going to do this correctly. Eight words, eight terms used to describe the scriptures, eight terms used to Eight titles given to the scriptures in Psalm 119. You know, now know all eight. You now know the Hebrew word that, that it comes from. You now know a basic definition for each one. And you now know every verse and where those terms are used in Psalm 119. Now what you have to do is go read each one and write down what you observe. Notice, noting if you find any patterns or anything of interest. Now, the next lecture, we'll just jump right in and start making all kinds of observations and applications to some things in Psalm 119. All right, right there. That's the best I can do. I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with this, but I, I'm going to have to post it. So if you, if you are appreciative of what I've just done, let me know. Okay, email me at newsif at yahoo.com. If you're using us on the Spreaker app, please, you can like us. You can like a, uh, like a message, just tapping the little heart, and you can leave a comment. Those are very helpful as well. And, um, you know, just find people who want to study the Bible and get them the podcast. Let's build a, 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 a group of individuals who want to learn, who want to be challenged, who want to grow, uh, some people who want help in their discipleship, Whatever we can do, we're going to do our best to produce things that will be helpful. And yes, there will be times it won't be the most exciting. But it's because I'm giving you work to do. All right? The next lesson will really dig in and hopefully it will be beneficial. All right, I'll stop right there. We have gone 47 minutes. 47 minutes. But it's 47 minutes spent thinking about and looking and giving you things to consider in God's word. And whenever it's God's word is the subject, it's always time well spent. So dig into Psalm 119. Be reading Thomas Manton's book on the exposition of Psalm 119. Be writing, be observing, write questions. And then let me, you can either let me see your work, even if you don't want to let me see your work, even if you don't even care about doing that. If you've got questions in regards to Psalm 119, email them to me because I can structure a lecture that specifically works to answer that question. All right, this is for your benefit. Definitely not, oh, I mean, I will benefit from it, but it's not being done for my benefit, it's being done for yours. And I hope you'll take advantage of it. All right, that concludes this lesson For the VBC Bible Institute and podcast, we will be back hopefully maybe tomorrow for the next lesson. Um, And then hopefully today I can do some live broadcasts, but we will see. All right, everyone have a great day. Study the word of God. Love it. Meditate on it. Treasure it. And may God bless you as you do those things.